In this video we'll have uh, a look at how you can use loops and we also show a number of new things how you can use uh, booleans or logicals with loops and uh, some applications of for and while loops. Two new things that I will also use are the modulo operator and if you wonder what the modulo operator is, it's the person sign and if we check 104 percent 100 what it does it gives the remainder when of, of 104 when it's divided by 100 in this case it's 4 2 5 6 modulo 100 is 56 2 5 6 modulo 16 is 0 because 16 is a divisor of 2 5 6 so that's the modulo operator it can be used to find for instance if you have a certain angle and you want to know what the angle really is in degrees we say well there might be a number of times 360 in there but i'm not interested in that i'm only interested in the remainder and we see that an angle of 756 degrees is actually the same as 36, de 36 degrees with a few extra rounds um, so that's the modulo operator and the other thing i want to show you is that if i define an empty list or then i can later in my program still give it values by appending numbers so if i do list dot append i uh, use the append method of the list and this changes the actual list which is in front of the period and if i append two numbers then the list will contain these two numbers and, and this means i can uh, use this to uh, add values to this list and collect values that i found in this list that I find in different spaces in, in my program. So, of course, the result is the same as this, but sometimes in your program you don't know what the list will be, and you uh, want to append a certain variable uh, depending on some conditions. So this is what we will also use in our little prime generator. We'll make a program that will test all numbers below 100 for being a prime. And all numbers larger or equal to zero two and below 100 for being a prime so we can do this with a for loop hey, you already hear the for loop in this comment we are going to test for p test in a range starting with 2 ending with 100 so running up until 101 then for each number we will check all divisors that might be there so test all divisors from 2 up to but excluding p test and again we already can hear the for loop coming up so for i in range 2 comma p test and we check for this divisors but, but it's if the number p test is divisible by i it means it's not a prime so if p test modulo i is equal to zero it means it's not a prime but if the next time it is true again we should not s like this set it to true again because if only for one value we find the divisor it basically means that it's not a prime you could also use the reverse you could say uh, we have found a divisor we could say diff found is true and it also means we have to if we later check after the complete for loop we check if there was if so if the for loop is ended so we are here at the same margin as where the for loop starts and that's where the program will be when the for loop has ended we can check if diff found then, then it's not a prime so if not diff found then we can say print we have found a prime and then we can conclude that p test is a prime we can also add it to our prime list which of course then in the beginning has to be an empty list 
or we put zero and one depending on the definition in there but here we start that uh, we're only interested in the primes two and larger so the prime list is zero is an empty list initially and we end anything that we find of course this diff found is set to true but if we want to check diff found we also have to make sure that if no divisors are found that it is false so initially before we start looking for divisors we say diff found is false and we're optimistic in, in terms of prime we probably have found a prime we assume there will be no divisors until we've actually found them and then this even if only for one of these a divisor found a device found will be set to true so in this way we are by using this this uh, boolean this logical first setting it to false and then only in even if it only happens once set it to true we're basically doing a sort of or operator we test if it's divisible by two or by three or by four or by five or by six without having to type all these numbers because we have this for loop now and at the end we can then say print we have found len prime list primes and we print the prime list and this is again at the same margin as this for loop and as this and this is all done only once while well, this part checking all the divisors and then concluding whether it's a prime is of course done for every p test every value p that we test for being a prime let's see if this uh, program runs or if there's still an error in there somewhere no this runs we have found 25 primes and we see him here being enthusiastic when he finds one and then reporting the end result 25 primes starting at two less than 100. so this is uh, this program works but it can be made slightly more efficient if we change this some some loops from uh, for to while we can for instance avoid that once we found one divi divi divisor one number for which the p test is divisible then we don't have to look any further we already know that the that it won't be a prime so uh, continuing up to p tests is certainly not necessary anymore so if we use a while loop we can test for the two conditions whether we have reached p test but also whether we maybe have already found the divisor and then we can also stop by looking any further so while i is less than p test then we want to run and not diff found Well, the, the for loop already for us increased the value of i so now we have to do that ourselves so we have to add i is i plus one and we also have to add the initial value here because that's also what the for loop did for us <coughs> now and then everything should still work see if it uh, it runs and indeed we see the same result 25 primes found but now it's more efficient because it already stops uh, as soon as it found the divisor we could even make it slightly more efficient because if we have not found a divisor after the the, the square root of p test then we will not find them anymore uh, if you find two if, if there's a divisor one of the two numbers of the multiplication should always be less than the square root less or equal than the square root so we can also simply check well i times i is less than p test then it's useful to check it and otherwise less or equal p test and otherwise uh, it's no longer useful let's see if it still works we're not too strict and we feel still fine too. and we have made it even more efficient because now if it's a prime we already stop with this loop this part when uh, we have passed the square root of p test so you see that the while loop is slightly more complex especially if you use combinations of conditions like this and this but it also gives us opportunities to to be more versatile 
and optimize our program. And another thing that you see in this program is how you can lo use logicals to do things like AND and OR over all the iterations of a loop. And of course how to append the list and how you can find primes. There are many other constructs of loops and we'll have a look at a few uh, other ways in which you can use while and for loops in the next videos.